It's a visit with a person of high strangeness. Please push your record button. Today we are going to do show number three of the reviews of all the shows that um, we ever presented to you. We're going to cover year 2003 and 2004. Um, well, by now it became apparent uh, that a lot of people like the shows. Um, some of the friends got a little older, they went to the nursing home. Um, the show was repeated, it still is, at 11 o'clock on Friday morning. So those of you that can't stay up until prime time anymore, so while you're eating your lunch you can watch the shows. Uh, the travel increased. Uh, we networked the shows, which means uh, I would uh, recruit people in other little towns and places that had public access to television and uh, I would send them shows and then they in turn took it to their station and as a result of that, oh my god, things just grew and grew and grew and um, and it just became lakes. Uh, no, no telling where the shows ended up that day. They aired in Anchorage, they aired in Lansing, they just went everywhere and uh, where people got to enjoy them there. So let's take a look at 2003, okay? Um, in 2002, Jim McDermott was the recipient of the um, Human of the Year Award that uh, U.S. viewers and friends nominated, uh, you know, nominate people for every year. So the next clip I'm going to show you were uh, representing the, um, the awards to the three recipients that we had this year. So we're going to go right into that. We have a lot of things to cover today. And so... Each year, Temple of High Strangeness do the show a visit with a person of high strangeness. We give away, we give out an award, what we call the Human of the Year Award. Now, what it stands for is for a person to have done something very outstanding in our opinion, very outstanding for humanity for uh, with very unselfish reasons. And the way we arrive at that all through the year, uh, people are, do uh, are nominated to the viewers and the friends and things like that. And then about this time of the year, which is October, November, we then make a decision who is the recipient of that Human of the Year Award. Now, Last year it went to Jim McDermott, if you recall, for having spoke up uh, against the war and uh, tried to save us a lot of trouble. So this year we ran into a little problem here because we had so many people nominated that uh, we, had to, we couldn't just narrow it down to one. So we ended up having to narrow it down to three. And so... I'm going to tell you who the recipient of the Human of the Year Award is today. Now, Bill Ramsey is the recipient of one of, of one of the awards, and Bill is the person that keeps track of the sounds in the universe and uh, the, what we call the ohms. That's why on the bottom we thanked him for keeping track of the ohms. Bill is in Colorado. I talked to Bill on the phone and he couldn't come, so he asked me to accept it in, on his behalf. What he did say was, the Human of the Year Award, well, I'm flattered. Do you ever give away an unhuman year of the award? And we kind of laughed about that, so, so maybe next year we'll try that. On behalf of Bill Ramsey, he thanks all the viewers for having been voted one of our Human of the Year Award recipients. Second recipient of the Human of the Year Award is Bob White. Bob White, if you remember, is the gentleman that is in possession of the piece of a UFO. He resides in Missouri and uh, he has had a total uphill battle of trying to prove what this object is and help mankind that way. And uh, that's why he is the recipient and um, at this time he thanks you for 
voting him one of the recipients. Now, I will take this award to him in person, and uh, at a later time, we will show you that a little ceremony there. So, on behalf of Bob White, I am accepting this award. Tom Stahl, that you're very familiar with, is the third recipient. What Tom did, uh, he went for office. And one of the reasons he did that was so he could put in the voters' pamphlets information about the fact that we do have free energy and we can utilize it, if you will. And so I'm going to show you Tom Stahl's. Normally, the awards are may have a gold plate. And um, this year, for some reason, they wasn't made in gold because they were made in color. And uh, it kind of startled me there for a minute. But the, the gentleman at Artistry that makes our plaques here, he thought that because we had all these wonderful things on the plaques, they should be in color. And he, he apologized for the flag not having came out the way it should have. But knowing Tom Stahl and what he stands for, we think this flag is perfect. Now Tom will be with us in a little while, uh, in a few weeks, and we will present that to him in person. But here you have it, Tom Stahl's Human of the Year, of the Year Award. We talked about um, we talked about I have a total blank. This is uh, Glenn Anderson talking about peace. Um, here we go. Now I'm back on track. This was urban warfare and how to train people for martial law, David Montgomery. This is uh, Glenn Anderson, our local peace activist, uh, Mr. Montgomery again. He explained things to us about the submarines. And he works at Boeing's and uh, a lot of people recognize David Montgomery. And maybe you see some of yourself in those pictures, some of the actors from Olympia. We went to the flight museum and uh, showed you the display that they have. I have people coming from Europe and some of the viewers, some of the friends really appreciate it this tour that we took to the museum uh, by the Olympia Airport. This is Leah. She's reading a letter, that, a handwritten letter that was sent to her in 1984 by one of the gentlemen that actually worked on the atom bomb. And uh, this was an exclusive interview. Uh, this is Erica Jim Mars. Uh, she's his uh, publisher and his promoter. And here we're, we were discussing what it feels like uh, to spend a lot of time with the Mars. And the planes have landed at the Olympia Airport. They actually fly these things, you know. And uh, they have an air show every year in July, I believe. So we took you to the air show, and that was a hit. So when we think about how far we have come in weaponry and these things we are, <laughs> we have come a long way. These are orbs on the, on the bottom of Mount Adams. And uh, these are orbs that we took in, uh, actually in Lacey a few years ago. Orbs are those things that just float more orbs. Um, these were taken by Vandy and Hope uh, and put into a movie that we were allowed to share with you. These are the book lights of Joplin, Missouri. This is exclusive footage that we shot through a visit with a person of high strangeness. Scientists are now looking at it very closely and found all kinds of amazing things. Looks like we're going to be able to prove what the job lights, book lights are. Dr. Gibbons 
that made the uh, spook light famous. So now he has more than one and uh, uh, just left him and he sends his regards and thanks the viewers for, you know, just uh, cheering us on. Dr. Gibbons and uh, Dr. Gilbert Jordan, the um, Nobel Prize nominee in physics. That's also working with the spook lights. And uh, that was the night we went there to see what was going on in Joplin, Missouri. It was so exciting. This is my grandson and my cameraman, Malcolm Moore. We gave him choices to see what he wanted to watch and he said he would take orbs any day over some of the things and he has Mr. Elvis. He came and dropped in on us and we, we had a really, really good time. He answered some questions for us that we wanted to know. This is Bob White object. My first acquaintance with it was in February 2003. Dr. Jordan in Laughlin, Nevada, uh, talking to a group of people. It was actually my interview, but he was facing the other way. This is where they tested Bob White's object and came up with um, uh, the radiation level that it left behind. These are dental x-rays, Bob White. Now we go to the more spiritual, um, James Gilliland, um, the gentleman from the bottom of Mount Adams that has to retreat, and of course works with orbs. Um, Randy Hope, um, Hope and Randy, I can't remember their name, but they are with the same people that did the orbs. Bob White in his interview in Reeds, Springs, Missouri. We drove there through many tornadoes to get the story with him and bring him closer to your living room. In the meantime, lots of new tests have been done and uh, we are a little closer to identifying what Bob White's object is from the Museum of the Unexplained in Reed Springs, Missouri. My granddaughter, Ebony Moore, she was going to put chocolate factories in every state of the union. Uh, when I asked her what would she do, uh, Mr. Nichols, he submitted uh, movies to the International Film Festival in Laughlin and, and won an award with his crop soccer footage. This was Laughlin at the Flamingo, the International UFO Conference of 2003. 